Well, hello there. So, you want to know how I actually filmed the miniature based scenes in my Star Wars short film? Um, because I will take you on a journey of how I actually shot one of the scenes. It will be a TIE Fighter flyby scene. And of course, I have actually built everything up right now, so here we go. We have my BMPC 4K and the Sigma 18 to 35 on my newer slider uh, that I got from Amazon, I guess, for 250 euros with a small modification in it because. Uh, but we'll talk about that in the review video of the slider because. And I have it on these two camera tripods that I also got from Amazon. Pretty good monitor to see what is up. And then I have two lights set up, powered at max because. Because we are filming in F11, which is quite a high f-stop number, to get the TIE Fighter sharp all the way. And that is actually one of the things that you need to do when you want to film miniatures, get them sharp all the way through. No small f-stop numbers, because miniatures only look realistic on film when they are sharp all the way through. If not, you actually see that they are miniatures and not real. And we're actually filming in 5 frames per second to undercrank the frame rate to actually get that nice and similar motion that the guys at ILM did in the 70s when they filmed their TIE Fighter flybys. And we are really going slowly with the slider to get that janky movement in the camera that when you speed it up or play it backwards in normal frame rate, you get a really fast motion and it looks really, really good. And we are working with a 180 degree shutter rule to actually <laughs> get the normal motion blur that you need to make it look a bit more real. Since we are actually working with a really high f-stop number, we need a lot of light to actually make that stuff look good. So I cranked up my ISO settings to 1250, the Godox as a 60 to 100% and the small Falcon Eye slide again to 100% and I am not sure if that is actually enough light for the situation because normally I have two Godox but one is right now off on shooting. And then of course something that we also need is something to make the object that we want to film stand out. In that case it's a blue screen. I got the setup for around 60 euros from Calumet, that's a German uh, photo brand. Uh, it's pretty cool. I also have a black background paper that <laughs> was also like 40 euros or something. So that's really good. It's very fast and exchangeable and it does its job very well. And the last thing on my list is actually this giant heavy duty tripod, which uh, in German is a Galgenstativ. I don't know the English word. I guess it's heavy tripod. I'm normally using it for my microphone to get that out of frame, which works really well. And uh, now I'm using it for the TIE Fighter to hang from a fishing hook line. I don't know the exact word for that as well. I guess it's fishing line. And um, it works very well. You don't see the fishing hook in the shot afterwards or it's easy to mask out. And there's one small caveat to it and that is actually that the problem is the TIE Fighter needs to pendle itself out and that can take some quite some time. And if you accidentally bump against, good that I didn't do that right now, bump against the tripod, then it takes a lot of time to actually wait again. And now that we got the footage, it's time for importing. <laughs> so the first thing you actually have to do is importing the files into your cut program. In my case, that's David Resolves 17. And then we create a new timeline with the imported footage. Settings are perfectly the way they are. Looks good for me. And then I cut off all the slack that I don't need. It's fine with me. I want it a bit faster. You see, it's still in log formats because it's bra in my case. Going right here, adding a Rec 709 a lot to give it a normal color grade so that we get actually normal colors on the TIE Fighter and the normal blue right here on the blue screen. Next step, exporting. And I'm exporting Apple ProRes 422 LT, which is the smaller version of Apple ProRes, not the high quality, not the proxy, but the mid-sized version. And it's much better than H.264 in quality and output. 
and a more quality for keying and blue screening and whatever there is is always better so calling it tie fighter fl flyby here in after effects we're doing a new composition we don't need 4k uh, we need this one is what i want full hd 25 the thing itself is two seconds so let's make it three next thing we are actually going to do is cutting out the tie fighter you could actually do that by masks or stuff but it is this is really really you need to have a lot of patience for stuff like that and um, since the last version we actually have this nice tool up here it's called roto brush version 2 it's an ai based adobe based i think they call it sensei or something um program and it's really good in cutting out stuff and actually remember well everything is i use that exclusively on all the stuff that i do now even on key uh, even on keying i wrote a brush it before and then just do some frickles with keying it's really good so i'll show you how i actually do that double click on the layer then zoom in a bit see that you're in your at your first position or the position you want it to start then you click on the roto brush then you got this rel relatively small brush you if you don't have it on your side right here you can actually go here and uh, open the brush tool you see all the brushes you take one that is a bit bigger then you actually just bloop, all around so then you see he actually almost got it there are some small thingies that are a bit weird and we're going a bit smaller and uh, adding those things as well with a small catch here we got that edge right if you hold down alt you actually see it becomes this red one and this is actually deleting stuff so or deleting masks that he created and so you can actually go smaller and smaller and smaller and this becomes even closer than setting the quality here to best so this actually takes a bit longer but the quality gets much much improved and then we have a lot of different settings. We have Fetter, 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 which actually makes the, the edge a softer contrast. He moves based on a light and shadow and uh, shift edge. You can actually close down the edge you want and reduce chatter is uh, all those small nooks and crannies. If you have different uh, images with a lot of uh, sharp and jacked edges, then you use a reduce a chatter for that. Uh, in our case, we don't need to feather it even more. Shift edge, we are going to shift the edge a bit so that it comes closer and we reduce the chatter for a small amount and the contrast will be decreased a tad. That should be fine. Since we have a motion blurred thing, we use motion blur because our image actually uses motion blur and we decontaminate the edges because we want it to uh, be really clear at the edges. So that is all we have to do. Now the final thing, you use your finger and you push onto spacebar. And then you wait, here's the time-lapse. And we are done. Hello, welcome back. and. Uh, now the last thing we have to actually do to make After Effects realize that it is finished. Pretty simple. Here's a small button that says freeze. This freezes all the stuff that it has done. And then we are finished. But that also takes quite some time. So next time lapse. And we are back and uh, actually we've cut it out pretty easily, it took some time, but uh, it's much faster than when you cut it out by hand. And the TIE Fighter is actually cut completely from its background. And I don't think we even have to key in that case, because I don't see any blue that is left on the TIE Fighter itself, except down here, but that is... Uh, 
but that is actually so little that I think it doesn't matter at all. So without that, we are actually going in and uh, bringing in the background and some stuff so that we can see how that looks. So I imported two different things. Oh, one is this star field right here that I made in Photoshop. It's pretty simple brushes and then a white brush with a scatter brush with dots and then you just randomly and then you get this star field. And the other is uh, this nebula that I found on the internet and uh, downloaded a tad bigger so that it actually fills out both the horizontal and the vertical and then let's copy it, duplicate it in that case, that's uh, Shift D or Command D on the Mac. Let's actually duplicate them once more. Then I normally make a null object, parent them, clear down the position and it should be somewhere around here. Doesn't matter. And then at the end, we set another keyframe and it moves in this direction. It looks like the ship is moving through space. And now that we see that it's actually moving through space, we are dropping down an adjustment layer on top of everything to color grade. And then we put down the Lumetri color effects. I don't think we need anything more. Maybe we can give another sharpen to it. And uh, I'm actually fine with that scene. It's just a flying scene in that case. So, and after that, you can actually drop down uh, another thing in my case that's the nebula i really enjoy that i'm dropping that down somewhere here and then changing the blending mode to screen so that the black actually fades out and then i'm dropping it down a bit more so that it's actually in the background and i'm putting it above the adjustment layer because i don't like the dropping effect of the adjustment layer so that looks pretty good parenting it to the null object as well so that it actually follows the path that is putting in some lens dirt that I actually made in Photoshop and uh, that is a nice effect as well. This is these kinds of things you normally see as transitions but it also works really well in uh, that kind of fashion screen and uh, I enjoyed that really much and you put that down a bit let's say 30 or something and you actually not parent it, you put it like so at the beginning, like position keyframe and at the end you move it a tad and then this moves itself so that it looks like the, as the camera would have gotten some sun rays or something. This is the final scene that we just created. So thank you very much for watching. My name is Leech as always. I uh, hope you enjoyed that and le learned something from it. If so, really good. Looking forward to, to your miniature based films and techniques. And uh, until then, I'm off writing the next script. And until then, we'll see us. Yeah, goodbye.